Right, today I'd like to share with you an interview which I did with the Intrepid camera company back in January. Now Intrepid are a UK based company making brand new 4x5 and 8x10 inch folding film cameras off the back of a successful Kickstarter. I'd first heard of them through a chap called Alan Brock who has a YouTube channel which I follow. He's a large format film photographer who's a great photographer and also really entertaining and knowledgeable guy. You should definitely check out his channel which I'll link to on the end card and in the video notes. Uh, and yeah, he uses this camera um, and I knew that I liked 4x5 as a format but I just never really found a camera which was suitable for backpacking and hiking. They were either too bulky and heavy or they were kind of old and needed work. Uh, this looked like it was going to be a great fit so I placed my order and they hand make these so while I was awaiting my order I contacted them to see if they'd be happy to have me in and answer a few questions. Maxim Grew who is one of the founders and directors there kindly wrote back to me and said they would. Uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoy this interview. Bear with me on the audio, it was very noisy in there and I did what I could with my limited experience and the gear I had, uh, but I hope you enjoy it. Taking a train ride across the beautiful South Downs of Southern England, I blundered around the Brighton Industrial Estate for a while before I finally found the entrance to Intrepid's new headquarters. Okay, so I'm here with Max from Intrepid Camera and uh, we are in the middle of the studio here in, a, in, in, in production. So thank you for taking me, yeah, no taking worries. time out of your busy right, day to, you. to speak to me. And uh, yeah, I just wondered if I could ask you a few questions. Of course, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, firstly, like how did, um, what was the idea behind Intrepid Camera? So it, it all started um, back at university. I was looking into um, sort of what would happen if uh, large format cameras continue to be really expensive the film continued to sort of slow disappear, lenses were going up in price and what sort of that would mean for the loss of skill and knowledge if people weren't getting into it. Uh, at the time I was very much interested in sort of open source technology, 3D printing was becoming a bit of a, a big thing and um, so I started looking down that route of how you can make a large format camera accessible and open Yeah. and um, that became my dissertation project at university, made yeah. some prototypes and then um, someone said to me, oh well why don't you pop this on Kickstarter, you know, let's just see what happens. Yeah. So I put some time into that and wasn't really sure how it would go and then it was really successful which was fantastic, we got great support from the community Yeah. and we ended up moving away from an open source idea and actually just thinking about how we could build a camera on those principles and provide an affordable high quality camera to everyone that sort of that wasn't really available at the time mm -hmm. and well but I think we're there's a few other people doing it, but yeah, it's still yeah. not massively available now. Nice, yeah. Were you a large format photographer yourself? I had shot uh, 4x5 and 8x10 mm -hmm. before, but I spent a lot of time building cameras and right. uh, shooting paper negatives and yeah. stuff like okay. things like that. A lot of them um, uh, realised that I was more interested in the process of building cameras and taking a few pictures than moving on to the next build rather than than the actual pictures I was taking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically, you've got to realise where your, where your hobbies are. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And there seems to be, to me, like, since I, I learned about you guys some months ago, there seems to be a real community and yeah. following of what you're doing here and um, I wanted to ask you how much uh, interaction you have with your customers and and kind of yeah if you do is that something that you yeah yeah happy? so we've got we've actually got loads of interaction with customers which is fantastic there's a really great community on the Facebook sort of a group of users mm -hmm. who we get a lot of feedback from and they uh, really inform what we do so a lot mm -hmm. of the smaller and bigger changes on the cameras as we go forward are informed by the community we have um, a uh, sort of friend of the company, Justin, who's out in the US, always testing our new products, putting, nice. them, yeah. putting yeah. them through sort of the harshest conditions okay, in the yeah. desert. Yeah. And he'll sort of send a big report back of like, this is what you can do better, this works really well, yeah. can we build on this? And more often than not, we implement what has come back as um, feedback from customers. And yeah. that sort of informs every incremental change we make. Yeah. Because we make sort of everything in-house from the tiniest bit to the to the whole camera. Mm -hmm. um, we can make all these little changes yeah. really quickly. And yeah. so that's quite so a unique position to be in. It is, it's great. So you've got like in-field quality control in exactly. a way, like yeah, just yeah, uh, exactly. di direct feedback, which was actually going to be my next question to you, which was, you know, how much of what you hear from your customers drives the design and drives innovation yeah. and, and the, the developments you have here. So, yeah, loads, mm -hmm. loads of what they feedback. Um, mm -hmm. For example, the spirit level bubbles on the top of the 8x10 was a uh, request from a customer who thought, yeah, we could we yeah. totally work out an easy and affordable way to implement them, and yeah. we did. Um, the way the front standard works on the 4x5 was improved recently and again that was feedback from a customer yeah. a sort of thing we hadn't necessarily thought to do and they're like oh that's great idea so yeah. you can literally uh, you know 
email us and become part of the team nice. for a brief yeah. period and yeah and um, we're always incredibly grateful for the for the feedback that we get yeah from so it's like user driven design exactly in a way, exactly which, yeah. which, is, which is i mean i know that you know, people really like that and it's uh, yeah you've, something i value in, in you know uh, in gear that i use for sure so it's uh, yeah yeah Brilliant. yeah and um i wonder what the what was the biggest challenge for you in taking this from an idea in the pub to uh <laughs> you know to reality to actually yeah. what you're doing here in the workshop now and yeah the biggest challenge was um, when we launched the first Kickstarter and um, it was very much a prototype we presented and mm -hmm. it was unlike the Kickstarter we just which was like we need some money to figure out how to do this and the yes. biggest challenge yeah. was the process of figuring out how to take our prototype into uh, into full-on production and that meant learning a lot of new skills yeah no and doubt. That, um, that went on for sort of a year when we were in a, a garage in a home just down the road and yeah that was without a doubt the biggest yeah, challenge. Yeah yeah because it's one thing to have the idea isn't it but then to to actually bring that, to yeah. implement that, and to learn about what it is to, to, yeah. to build a studio and a workshop, is exactly. put it into production is another thing. So we have that, so we've got one of these as a prototype, and now we need 350 much, much better ones. Yeah. We need to ship them all over the world. Yeah. That was, you know, yeah. that was a huge task. Sure, definitely. yeah, no doubt. No we doubt. did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it's really exciting to see. And it's, it's, I mean, I was actually quite pleased that there was, when I, uh, when I signed up to buy mine some weeks mm. ago, I saw that, you know, it's, it's sort of six, seven weeks, you know, at the moment, uh, you know, yeah. on orders, which is, which is, yeah. So we we build. So as soon as your order comes in, we start building it. And that's yeah. sort of how long it, it takes around a month to build. But at the minute right. we're okay. a month, sort of back, back ordered. Yeah, order. exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, I see, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, and just holding one here and seeing how lightweight they are is perfect for someone like me who wants to hike with this gear. Exactly. But yeah. I've been put off by the bulk and the weight of it, and just to see yeah. something that is not only affordable but really well designed yeah. and, and lightweight like I mean it's just as soon as I saw it I thought so that's, yeah, that's, like, you, I mean, that's a really interesting thing bro because like we initially were just trying to um, just trying to market this to people who couldn't afford right. the camera at no point were we sort of thinking well we'll also market to people who want a lightweight second camera yeah yeah and then as we sort of went through the design process we spotted opportunity with the design that we had that actually this mm -hmm. is an incredibly compact and lightweight camera yeah so the yeah. fact that you've bought it for that reason mm -hmm. just is it's fantastic because that wasn't our original goal. Yeah. So it's nice that we could have been able to appeal to a lot more. It is for sure. I mean, it's huge. It's become really clear to me just from four or five years of hiking with equipment now just yeah. how important it is to to pare down everything. Wait, and, ruin and, your day. It exactly. Takes yeah. Time. I mean, if you, yeah. at the end, I mean, I've had trips where I've taken gear and I've been so miserable at the end of the day yeah. that from carrying it, I've just put my tent up and just gone to bed in, in front of some really beautiful scenes because yeah. I've just had enough. Yeah, it's too much. Yeah, no, I've, yeah. I've been there myself. Yeah, yeah it's, for it's, sure. It's yeah. Great. What's next? I mean, the last thing I have to ask you before we have a look around at some of the cameras is what's next for you guys and what do you see in the year ahead and the years ahead? Um, the biggest thing we've got in the pipeline is um, an enlarger device that goes on the, uh, the back of the camera yeah. and clips on using the graphic clips and essentially allows you to use your 4x5 camera as right. an enlarger so you can make prints. Okay. And we're trying to sort of close the loop on the whole system so you can take yeah. pictures and make prints rather than having to... Um, send it off to be scanned Fantastic. sometimes and yeah. then get digital prints. We want to be able to have uh, the whole kit and it's a really small, nice little device that goes in the back. That's great. That's great. gets rid of the need of a huge 4x5 enlarger yeah, in the sure. corner of your bathroom. Well, there's a lot of people as well that have got this kind of hybrid workflow at the moment yep. where you're, you're, you, know, you have a, an analog kind of front end where you, yeah, you, exactly, and then you scan yeah. everything and do it. But to actually make the, the printing stage mm -hmm. uh, more accessible yeah. and and require less less bulky gear and, exactly, and investment yeah. in equipment. I mean that, that I mean that's the big gap at the yeah. minute. And when we've um, when we the products finished and we'll be as soon as we um, finish off the uh, commitment we made to our eight by ten customers and we sort of yeah. get everything a bit more in order we'll be um, yeah jumping on the next nice. and that sort of maintains exactly. the philosophy of what you've done here which is kind of to bring this type of camera to uh, to people who perhaps wouldn't have used it before exactly. or make no, it no, easier to bring, access. Yeah, and, bring yeah. printing to people who would have thought yeah. well I can only sort of go the scanner option because that's all I've room for. Yeah. Well maybe mm -hmm. not anymore. Yeah, for sure. Well, that sounds great. So, uh, well, thanks very much for talking to that me. I'm going to take pleasure. a quick look around the, uh, yeah, the workshop now yeah, and yeah. see things in action, see what's going on. But yeah, I mean, all the best with everything from the future. And uh, Thank you. Thanks very thanks much for much. speaking to me. Thank Cheers. you. Yeah. 3D printers. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're making the bits that hold the bubble levels on the top of the 8x10 cameras. Ah, OK. Yeah. So they'll do um, six of those every hour. Mm -hmm. so, oh, every two and a half hours, I'm saying. Yeah. This one's nearly finished. Um, yeah, and then when they come off, we uh, glue in the spirit level bubbles. And the good thing about doing it on a 3D printer is uh, the base of this is perfectly flat. Right. So you get a perfectly flat base to the part so okay, when yeah. it's on top of your camera. It's a true you level. Know it's actually a true level. Yeah, yeah. Not, not just kind yeah. of uh, rough edges and things exactly. like that. Exactly. So that's a good advantage of doing it on a 3D yeah. printer. Yeah. So you've got 
Hi there, I'm James. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Nice to meet you. Could you? Uh, I wonder if you could tell me just a little bit about what you're doing here. I'm just taping it shut, so it won't. While the glue's still setting, it won't expand out like that. Right, right. And all of this has to be done by hand, yeah. Yeah, everything yeah. by hand here, apart uh -huh. from the bellows. Um, not really. The inside of the bellows, which we raise it up. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, thank you for talking to me. Thanks. Right. Thanks a lot. Cheers. It was really interesting looking around the rest of the workshop, seeing things being made by hand alongside cutting edge technology and automated tooling machines, all forming part of this process. I wanted to let them get on with making people's cameras. I knew mine was in there somewhere too, so I said my goodbyes and thanked them for their time. I'm pleased to say my camera has arrived. I've had just one chance to shoot with this so far because the lens I've ordered for it has yet to arrive. But I was able to borrow one and take the camera to a place called Porchlight Press here in Vancouver. It's a letterpress studio doing some really interesting work. And whilst I'd usually be taking the camera out on a hike, uh, shooting landscapes, this was a chance to use it in a really interesting workspace and uh, yeah, just get a feel for how it handles. And I've got to say, I'm really, really happy with uh, how the camera is in use. It's very, very lightweight and it's got some really interesting features like just being able to turn the back like this to be able to switch between landscape and portrait is going to be really useful. Uh, and I can't wait to start kind of bringing you videos using this uh, out in the field. So uh, for now, I just want to share these images with you. There's going to be lots more to come, including a full introduction to 4x5 photography. Uh, there's more on my website, which I'll link to in the video uh, description. So I hope you enjoyed this and do come back because I'll be sharing a lot more about this soon. my heart